Hi guys, this is Korak from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on creating a VM instance on Google Cloud Platform. Now, before we get started with the topic at hand, let's just discuss today's agenda first. The first thing we talk about is what is a VM instance. Then we talk about how do you configure your VM instance. Then we talk about machine families and the different categories that machine family has. Then we talk about the pricing of the VMs on Google Cloud Platform. And finally, we talk about how to create your first VM instance on Google Cloud Platform. Also, if you do like our videos, please do subscribe to the Edureka channel. And if you're looking for a Google Cloud Architect certification, please do check out the link in the comments below. So let's get started. So first thing we talk about is what is a VM instance? As we all know that a virtual machine is a digital version of a physical computer, right? So a virtual machine software can run applications, op operating systems and all of that. So virtual machine being a copy of the physical machine when it comes to VM instance, an instance can be defined as a virtual machine hosted on Google Cloud Platform infrastructure, right? Since we're talking about Google Cloud Platform machine instances here, so a VM instance is nothing but a virtual machine that is hosted on Google Cloud Platform. So the source virtual machine for any instance is always the image from which it is deployed, right? So VM hosted on Google Cloud Platform infrastructure is a VM instance. The source VM is always the disk image that is available and the fact that you can choose your various machine properties that are there. So when you create a virtual machine, you get to choose the kind of properties your virtual machine will have. Let's say, for example, the kind of networking properties your VM has, or let's say the kind of storage capabilities, the instance type that you choose. All of these can be chosen by the user when you're creating a virtual machine instance on Google Cloud. So next we come to configuring your VM instance. Now, when it comes to configuring your very own VM, there are many options that you have when it comes to configuration such as you can configure the storage that your VM provides, the networking capabilities that your VM has and also you can manage your instance overall. So storage options are various and the most important thing is that when it comes to storage, boot persistent disks are there by default. So additional storage is always available to run apps. Next up, we have networks. Now, each network interface of an instance is associated with a subnet or a VPC unique network that you have. Now, that is basically the fact that when you create an instance, if you have certain subnet for a certain instance, your virtual private cloud will basically connect to that subnet that you have created before. So for this, you can use labels that you can have that you can also add during your VM creation process. So another thing that users can choose to do is add different labels to the VM instances that they create. And finally, we come to managing your instance. Now managing instances comes with the manage instance access during OS login, right? So you manage your SSH keys in the project metadata. Now these keys will basically help you log into and connect to your VM when it has been created. Now these keys are generally private keys and basically if you want to log into your OS and access the VM, what you have to do is generate certain private keys that will be able to access your VM. So this is all about configuring your VM instance. Next up, we come to machine families. Now what is a machine family? A machine family is nothing but a curated set of processor and hardware configurations that you have, which are optimized for specific workloads, right? So when you talk about Google Cloud Platform and the virtual machine instances that they have, there are various different machine instances that they provide because of the different machine families that they belong to. Let's say, for example, there are machine families such as the N1, N2D and the N2 available. Now, each different instance is optimized separately for a separate workload and the pricing will be based separately on that as well. So machine instances, when we talk about it, let's see that first we select a machine type from the instance family to determine the resources in the VM, right? And then we further categorize the machine family to types on the price to performance ratio that they have. And finally, the curated set of processes and hardware com configurations is optimized for the workload that is there. So next up, we can talk about the different categories that are there. Now, the first category is the E2. 
Now E2 has around 32 virtual CPUs, 128 GB memory and the AMD EPYC ROM processor, right? Whereas when we talk about N2, we can see that compared to E2's 32 virtual CPUs, N2 has around 128 virtual CPUs, whereas there is around 8 GB memory per virtual CPU and it is available on Intel Ice Lake. When we talk about N2D, we can see that compared to N2 and E2, N2D has 224 virtual CPUs. The 8 GB memory per virtual CPU is the same as N2, whereas it is available only on the second gen EPYC. Then we talk about the Tau T2D. Now the Tau T2D offers the users around 60 virtual CPUs, 4 GB of memory per CPU, which is different from the N2 and N2D and third generation EPYC Milan. And the last one we talk about here is N1. Now N1 offers you 96 virtual CPU, 6.5 GB memory per virtual CPU, and it's available on the Intel San Sandy Bridge platform, right? So these are the various machine instances and the categories that they have. And as you can see, these are basically different and can be used for different workloads and basics on the basis of which need needs to be optimized. For example, you can optimize the amount of virtual CPUs, you can optimize the amount of memory, you can optimize other things as well, such as networks and all of that. So this is basically all about machine families. Next up, we talk about the pricing. When it comes to pricing, it's based on three major points. Basically, pricing is based on the billing mode, the instance uptime, and the resource which is based on. When it comes to billing mode, minimum one minute is charged for virtual CPUs. Afterwards, there are one second increments for whatever VM has been used. Instance uptime allows the compute engine to apply sustained use for discounts to all the predefined machine types that are there. And finally, there is the resource-based pricing model, which talks about the number of seconds between starting and stopping an instance. And that is how you determine the price of your VM, right? So this basically gives you an idea about the E2 standard pricing, where we can see that the E2 standard 2 has two virtual CPUs, 8 GB memory, and is around $0.067 per month. And the spot price is around $0.002. So likewise, it's the same for N2 where you can see that there are different virtual CPUs for the different types of N2 standard machine types. And these are the different prices. For example, N2 standard 2 has two virtual CPUs, 8 GB memory, etc. And finally, we can see the N2D standard pricing. Now, all of this is different for the different machine families that are there, right? So this is how you basically see the pricing for what VM you are using. Finally, we come to creating your first VM on Google Cloud Platform. So let's get started. So log into your console and make sure you go to Compute Engine. So this is where you want to go. Once you go to Compute Engine, you have to go to VM Instances. Just try and go back here. Right. So once you go to VM Instance, what you have to do is go to Create Instance. Now, as soon as you do that, so when you see you have create instance, you can name your instance, let's say instance one, you can add labels to it. So next we come to labels. Now labels will basically help you identify the whatever instance resources are there. So you can help manage labels. So the labels will help you identify the resources that are there. Let's say for example, so you've now added your labels. So let's check out the other things that we can do. Now the region, let's see the regions we can do. So this is US Central right now. You can change this to a lot of things. Let's change it to Europe and London. So if you change it to London, you can see here the different kind of machine configurations that you have. Now this has two hosted, two to three hosted zones, yeah. It has three hosted zones and as you can see there's a monthly estimate of you having around 32.71 dollars per month right so machine configuration now this by default is set to e2 what you have to do here is check out the other ones that are there let's say let's check out n1 so as you can see the price has just gone down by a little bit 
and you have to make sure that the prices for your VM are low so that you can have it free tier accessible and the machine type that you have here is the N1 standard so that is around $32 per month you can change it to F1 micro let's see yeah so once you do that you can see that the monthly estimate is around $6.11 and it is free tier accessible and the other things that you can do is the CPU platform and the GPU that is there after that if you don't have other things you can check out the boot disk that is there now you can change your boot disk let's say it is by default set to Debian you can change it to CentOS and once you change it to CentOS let's check it out the pricing changes and it has changed to 7.31 so we don't want that we want our VM to have the least possible cost and we change it back to Debian and here you go so we are back to 6.11 all you have to do now is go to the advanced settings so once you go to these advanced settings you have to go to networking and let's say you can add these tags let's say the web tag that you had so this networking tag will basically have any resources has the web tag will have to be rerouted towards this network traffic after this let's just so all you have to do now is create the instance right so as you can see your instance has been created now what you need to do is connect to your instance and you can check out your instant details over here you can see, click on your instance you can check out the different details of your instance and you can check out the observability and all of that the logs so as you can see this is basic information instance one instance id the type of instance the status all of that which zone and the templates so let's go back and try connecting to our instance so if you go to basic ssh let's try this one out so as you can see the ssh terminal has opened up so all you need to do is right now type in lsblk so if you do lsblk you'll basically check out the name and the size of your disk and after this just put it to host name and instance one is the host name so let's now check if we can sudo into this yes we can so right now after this all you need to do is cat etc slash os release and you can check the name of your linux vm and the id the instance type all of that so this is how you check it with ssh right so what you can do now is try and check it with the others as well you can check it in gcloud command all you need to do is copy this and run in cloud shell right so this is the command that you've used to connect to your cloud shell and all you need to do is enter and authorize right so this is basically your connecting to the instance and all you have to do here is the same command cat etc os release enter right so once you do the cat.etc you can see that these are all the names of the vm and the version and the id that you have so this is how you can connect to your vm instance using google cloud and with that i end today's session this is how you can create your vm instance on google cloud platform thank you and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!